seat repair on a D model tree lounge tree stand. William Hovey Smith, 2015. I'm the author of Backyard Deer Hunting, and we use tree stands, and here I fix up an old one. This is Hovey Smith with Hovey's Outdoor Adventures. And we have a new tree lounge tree stand in the house. This is a used tree stand, and this is the later design, the so-called D model, in that it's channel aluminum here as a D shaped profile rather than being box aluminum. Now this is a lighter weight unit than those originally made by Tree Lounge. Bob and Margaret made a very rugged, heavy unit. This is not so. Uh, it was purposefully lightened in weight. Uh, I can't say exactly, but my feeling is about now 15 pounds lighter than the original tree lounge. Uh, consequently, one would not expect it to carry quite the load. Uh, the tree lounge was rated for a maximum of 350 pounds. Uh, this one, I would say not so much. I have no idea exactly how much less. However, this is a used stand. And I bought it because I was very interested in finding out what the differences were. Well, this stand has a torn seat, as you would see right here. I am going to repair this seat. I have a new seat cloth, and I could replace it all together. But I have some nylon straps here, and what I'm going to do is take fishing line and sew up this rip here and put reinforcing straps across so I'm confident that, yeah, the seat will be able to support me. Now I weigh about 185 pounds, so uh, that's certainly within the limits of this, uh, of this stand, however much less it might be. I do like some features. It does have an aluminum rest here rather than being wood, and I like that. I like the lighter weight. I'm an older guy. I'll be able to carry it better. And so, yeah. Uh, so now, someone put some strange chemo on it. Uh, this blue fleck something or something or other. Uh, I don't know where in the world it came from. Stuck on there pretty good. Uh, I'm going to see if I can peel some of it off. Uh, that I can't, uh, I may just paint over, in fact. But, yeah, the idea is to get this thing up in the woods, see if it adapts to the wheel kit, and I suspect it will, and be a lighter weight unit for me to use. That'll be perfectly adequate for my use. Withdrawing the galvanized screws here is not very difficult. Uh, even using this T-shaped screwdriver here. Yeah, come out pretty easy. There is one in the middle up top that I screwed back in because that holds the cross straps for the harness. And so I went ahead and left that one just to keep those straps indexed in place while I work on the rest of the fabric here. We'll shortly have these all out. Although I certainly was not there to witness the event, what I suspect happened to tear the seat here was nothing that the hunter did or did not do. What I believe happened was this was on a tree. You can see the sap here that's stripped down, probably a pine tree and a pine tree limb fell. Now the seat is about like this, so this is the back, and the branch hit here and here, and also a couple here and here, and so it stabbed through the fabric. And then it fell off to one side, 
and when it fell that's when this rip occurred so that's how I believe this injury to this fabric was done so uh, those of you who have tree lounges this is a reminder not to leave them on the trees if you do when you don't use them this can happen because branches fall out of these pine trees they sure do and like I say you can see the drip of the sap here that's almost undoubtedly what I think happened so the fabric is sound it was just given a gushunk like that and it couldn't stand that kind of loading once I get it patched up yeah it'll do just fine and the first thing I'm going to do is catch up these edges back and forth then I'm going to sew in the nylon reinforcing strap so I located some bow fishing line I'd salvage uh, I forget this is 50 or 80 pound braided bow fishing line I also had a large needle in a kit I bought years and years ago that had an assortment of needles and this one I think is a darning needle it has a particularly large eye and a sort of bluntish point but uh, it's just fine for working this material which has coarse pores and so you can work the needle through it without any problem but you can see what I'm doing here you can see the back side and I've run the line both ways to cross hatch it and catch up things both top and bottom and from side to side so this is a pretty good repair right here so far as strength goes now of course it looks like blazes but I'm not interested in looks I'm interested in when I'm 30 feet up in a tree that this seat doesn't split out on me now that could be rather disastrous but I'm going to go ahead and finish this take up catch up these and then run a strap of nylon diagonally across this tear from edge to edge like this and with those yeah I feel perfectly confident that this cloth will hold me just as well as it did uh, uh, when the stand was new I have now completed the stitching and no it's not very pretty indeed but it is strong and you can see here of course the long tear diagonal and these two small ones here so what I'm going to do at this stage is take this nylon strap and stitch it all the way across from here to here and that will further reinforce this and then I wouldn't have any problems at all uh, you know climbing a tree in this now I wouldn't have done this if this fabric had been rotten but the fact that the fabric itself is strong but was just pierced by that falling limb so that's the reason I salvaged this if the fabric had been weak or rotten or this stand had been up somewhere for years and uh, you sort of look at it and it's white and discolored and you can take it and pull it apart with the fingers and it starts cracking no then that's obviously not something to be repaired now do you repair it at all well it's up to you you know you're risking your life with this so you want to make very sure that if you do it yeah you do it right and you do it strongly and I certainly can't guarantee any results you get so if you repair your own tree lounge like this uh, yeah you very much do it at your own risk just to show you a little detail of the sewing uh, you'll notice I've made this box here on this side and this is where that tear was right there so that thoroughly reinforces that now coming out here with this strap I'm following my stitching here so this is going to cover on both sides and stitch on both sides as I stitch it all the way down and ultimately wind up here on this end so this is going to be a very strong repair indeed now actually uh, when I use this stand very often I'll put a, a chill pad over the top of this which further distributes the weight more evenly on this entire surface so yeah uh, this is going to be absolutely safe by the time I get through with it 
And in particular with a chill pad, I needn't worry about all these little bumps and whatever that I have come with the sewing. In previous videos, I've described how to do various sewing projects, uh, things like making holsters uh, for pistols like this, and how to sew them up out of various materials. Uh, this uses denim and nylon reinforcing. But uh, for those who didn't see those and don't know anything about hand sewing, uh, this is a good background. Needle, of course. This one is particularly large. Uh, most of them are not this big. Uh, you go to your crafts department to get a needle this size. You take your thread, this, just moisten it, of course, so to pull it out straight. This is, of course, thicker than any usual thread. And you just thread the eye of the needle. There we go. You capture the other side and you pull it through the center. Even up your string ends. Take your needle down to the middle of the thread. Now you take care not to tangle the thread along the way. So you get a straight run all the way through. Then at the back, just a simple overhand knot. It's sufficient to tie cord. Now if you're tying something slick, <laughs> you know, like fishing line, uh, polymer fishing line, now that's a horse different color. But you see that's a knot now. So typically, I say I want to continue this path through here. Go to your last loop. You catch up your thread like that. Then go down through your fabric. Okay. Pull through. Pull tight. Then come back up from the other side along the line you want to start your stitch. Okay. Make sure you pull all the way through tight. And go back in with your next stitch. Push through. Straighten out your cord if it's tangled. That got caught around a loop apparently. There you go. That's good. And go back again. Now I'm not using a thimble. Oh, this is a pretty fat needle. But if you're using a smaller smaller needle, yeah, that you can push it through your fingers if you're trying to do anything really tough. So yeah, you can use a thimble. Or really, really coarse stuff. Uh, sailors use a leather palm to push needles through thick canvas and stuff. And just continue until you're done. You can now see that we have our seat repaired here as I had described it. Now there is a couple of things. Um, there is a metal strip here. So if you happen to buy a tree line just missing a seat, you also need to have these metal parts on both the top and bottom. This is nothing more than a piece of strap steel that you can drill at appropriate spots for the holes if you don't happen to have it. Or if you throw away one of these seats because it is worn out, make sure you recover these steel parts because you will need them to reattach the next one. So this 
repair. Yeah, I call that one good. I think that's as good a repair as you're going to get. And I see no reason to do anything else with it. Particularly as I'm very apt going to use a chill pad over the top of that anyway. But we still have the rest of this to do something with, if anything, this season. And I'm not so sure I will. The, uh, I don't want to repaint it because I want to put it in the woods sooner than that. Plus, I don't want that smell of fresh paint all over everything. Uh, that takes, well, weeks to cure off. So if I put it in the field, yeah, it's probably going to look just like it is right now. But I do want to make sure that the wheel kits will actually fit it. Among my prize winning books are backyard deer hunting, crossbow hunting, extreme muzzleloading, practical bow fishing, and a new ebook series on muzzleloading guns. And shooting and maintaining your muzzleloader is one of the better ones with a lot of five star reviews. I have a new series of business books in the Profit series, the first of which is Ideas for New Businesses, and here is a little blurb about me and also about the book. The cosmetic work on this stand is going to have to wait until summertime. I need to get some deer killed. Now I'll have a follow-up video showing the stand outfitted with accessories and being put on a tree. For more info on my books, blogs, and more than 450 videos, you can go to my website, www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye, and God bless.